Dagang salamat, baliho maglingkod. sa dakbayan sa suko, Mayor Edgardo Colina Labelia. Pag-usapan sa tanan ng pagkaroon, kung may usap ang mabiyatan ka, matag-usapan ang tunggapon. Upang ka sa kausapan sa tanan ng pagkaroon, kung may usap ang mabiyatan ka, Vice President Jose Pablo, Secretary Michael Dino, Governor Gwen Garcia, Vice Mayor Michael Roma, Mr. Chester Cucalion, Mayor Juanes Aligado, Judge Macaundas at Jimerson, the Honorable Consul of Japan, Consul Hiroshi Watanabe, Consul General Hong Kong J of Korea, Consul Antonio Chu of the Slovak Republic, representatives of the Consulate of China, Mr. Kenneth Gopokwe, Mr. Alvin, Attorney Alvin Garcia, and Mrs. Garcia, my colleagues of the walk and talk, and twice a week in Friendship Club, headed by President Attorney Frank Malino and our Emeritus President, Mr. Ben Son. Councilor Junjun Osmeña, Councilor Dave Tumula, Councilor James Cuenco, Councilor Lia Hapson, did I miss someone from the members of the Council, Councilor Don Don Monteveros, Councilor uh, Commissioner Nalasia, Commissioner Hans Abelia, soon to be Justice of the Court of Appeals. Mr. and Mrs. Vito Barino, my very dear Barangay officials, especially those who also did not come from our same political persuasion, Sorry. the captains, the leaders, the Cebu City Police headed by Police Colonel Gemma Winlohan, the regional directors from the government agencies, national, Vice President Kenneth Ho, Attorney Ferdinand Marquez of Toledo City, the Cebu Chamber of Commerce, my fellow Cebuanos, and of course I've seen there my brother-in-law who flew all the way from Siargao together with his better wife, who happens to be my younger sister. I'm referring to Congressman Bingo Matugas and Ethel Lapelia Matugas. And of course, my family, my better half, Joy Lapelia, who has always been with me. And of course, my mother, Mama Rhoda, Ranzuela, Labelia, and all of us who love Cebu City, and of course Cebu Province, because our governor is here, and I watched his first 100 days, very impressive. Can we give a round of applause to Governor Edwards? 
una sa tanan payong hapon diha kanini daghang salamat sa inyong pagtambo karon diri sa International Eucharistic Convention Center aron markahan ang unang usa ka gatos nga adlaw niini ning atong bag-on administration Reviewing the services rendered delivered so far is a task I welcome. It is a matter of public trust and accountability. Values I always name when speaking before fellow public officials. This afternoon, I am happy to recount that what City Hall has delivered so far along with the projects just begin now decisively in motion. Mapasalamatong usap ako na may atubang kaninyo kay kadaghanan kaninyo ang mitabang sa pagpadagan sa mga nasundang ng programa. Isang bagong ipakanako ang pag-ambilay sa executive powers nagpasalamat Kung dako sa ginoo na ubay-ubay man ko di ay ang atong mga nabugna para sa atong takbayan sa suko. I remember last first week of October, I went to the farm I started back in 1993 with a modest stretch of land. There was a harvest to do early this month. Of course, not an easy task. At some point, I had to pause for breath, drinking water while enjoying the shade of mango trees. And I contemplated the labor and patience needed for trees to bear fruit. My thoughts drifted to a time yet to come. Not just my future, but the future of our shared lives. Because God did not make humans as undying, power-hungry vampires. A day will come when I will no longer stand under the streets. Others will take my place. Others not yet here, the sons and daughters of the future. In that future, there are many people whose hands practically no one here, no one here, will hold for shame. No matter how anyone tries, sometimes too hard, to stay in the spotlight, as if politics were melodrama, as if with their mere game of power for you. Because just like life, politics is just fleeting and passing, because life is just a joy. In truth, Democratic politics makes us answerable to the people around and to the future generations. Surely, we all share the hope that others far from us in time will harvest better fruits, that they will take shelter under more abundant shade than ours. Even if we can only envision the legacies we must pass on to the future generations. Even if the people to come will never meet us under the very trees we have planted today. Sa atong pagsulbo, ang unod ni itawag ng legacy sa mana sa accountability o kaaguhan Tungod kay usa ang ilang mapamating gamot the root. Our legacies are only as good as our ability to perceive voices from the future. The voices that young people today are trying their best to make us hear. Unsa kaha ang ikasulti sa mga tigong gikan sa kaubaon? Kabahin sa mga kalihukan, kanatong karun, mga katawahan, unsa sa atong mga binuhatan ang ilang mahilang maihap na nindun. 
taru ug dana sabab sa unang usak kagatos nga adlaw nga pagtubag ni ini mga pangtanaha humble today then i report the steps the city hall has taken to make real the kausaban agenda which as you all know during my inaugural speech speech has ten points when i first proposed to clean up our rivers and waterways as an immediate measure I only have guessed that, that flooding and crash were two sides of the same problem. Engineer Kenneth Carmelita Enriquez, the engineer who leads the, public, the Department of Public Works and Engineering, analyzed the mess in our rivers. We learned that along with the new infrastructure, flood prevention requires taking garbage out of our tributaries. Regrettably, sad to say, the past administration never sought to unplug, to unplug them. The Kausaban, the name our department heads now call this new administration, decided to act quickly. We started the river clean up right. Holding pounds of grass out of Guadalupe and Mahiga rivers, tributaries even. In the process, we also launched the Cebu City Waterways Rehabilitation Project, the first of its kind in our city. Kinabuhi sa Katubigan is aimed at making our rivers once again livable for fish. Someday, soon, our children can experience what they enjoy as a kid here in Cebu City, playing along clean riverbanks and dipping my feet in clear living waters. A clean and green city demands long-term effort, while clearing waterways also launch kakahuyang
everything starts with a dream. Ato ko yung tumanong kayo, 3 million trees na 3 years. Our goal is to grow 3 million trees in the next 3 years. It is not impossible. Kakahuyan sa kaubaon after all, galvanized 75 multi-sectoral groups and 10,000 volunteers in its first activity. At three different sites, we planted 10,000 saplings. And my deep gratitude goes to everyone who responded to my call to plant these trees. I thank Vice Mayor Mike Rama and the Department Heads and all the councillors for helping us and the rest of the barangay officials and volunteers to start to be participate, to who have participated in the kickoff ceremony. Two long-term trusts must be observed. First, I have authorized John Jigo Dakwa of the City Environment and Natural Resources Office to sanction people who pollute our waters. In light of these efforts, everyone can all agree that the mismanagement, the mismanagement of a resource as cars as water is playing in Tuli Rabot. There should be little surprise that presently five officials at the Metropolitan Cebu Water District. Some of them are my friends. But I have my duty to perform under my oath of office. Had he dismissed. Joel Mito is another tireless leader at our Department of Public Services. Kana si Joel, ugang iyang mga kuyo kita. Alas tres pa na sa buntag, umata, magsunod sa ating, sa mga hugawan. Kaya mawag yung buwana, kaya alas inko masan kumulakaw sa atong mga kadalanan sa syudad sa subo. Una ko papadun sa atong mga kauban sa wok at to. Ilang ko usahing mahayan nga nang muabot ko alas ay smidya na. Yung ko nagsuro yung mataon ko, nagtanaw ko sa mga lugar na wak mapapunit ang basura to help his cause at the meeting with the 80 barangays, barangay captains last August. A budget of 5 million pesos each was promised by me to each community to help them clean its streets and rid its planets of trash. Our administration intends to keep that promise up in the incentive with another 5 million pesos for the barangays, which can sustain the needs of their neighborhoods. It is time to deter the human beings who trust nature and our public spaces. Against them, and under the banner of the Green Cebu City Stewards, we have mobilized the new or three new watchdogs, we call them the River Patrol, the Forest Rangers, and the Coastal Patrol. I urge everyone to help these stewards ensure the cleanliness and greening of spaces we have in common. Please remember that our river banks and coasts Streets and parks are places where many people who lack finer things in life gather to renew themselves, like Joel Biton and Jago, 
and Edeta Pirus, our parks and playground, and Erwin de la Serna of the Fort San Pedro Plaza Independencia. Know the urgency of restoring the dignity and livability of our natural and public spaces. I invite you visit those places, those sites today, and you can feel the change in their atmosphere. In the past, applying for business and building permits must have felt like waiting in limbo. The Cebu Chamber of Commerce can attest to this. I am happy to report to the city that this purgatory has ended. Processing certain kinds of permits now takes only 24 hours for other businesses with strict regulatory requirements. 60 days is all it takes so long as these businesses can provide an affidavit of undertaking. Thank you. Thank you. building permit application sa akong Procos Project na 22 story condominium. Uh, actually, surprise me ko kaya sa akong experience mga previous administration. Okay, Dugay, kung di ita mo doon, di mo kong tingkay. Then, katon, sorry lang ko kung sa'y dagan. Kaya kinilagay, kuhan sa ta, gusto tag kausapan lang. Kaya karong mo rin na-feel, naging siguro na ito tanan. So, akong gitry at to after three days sa application, then na-surprise ni ko kay kuwan ako lang na kumanaw check yung akong application. Dali ni siya, you just compare sa previous administration. So, satisfied ko kayo kung na-feel ko lang kung mga takot na rin. Takot niyo kayo changes. Okay, the administration has promised the public that they will process all the requirements of government, uh, government requirements in just one day. So that's ease of doing business. No? So I could attest that one day review from the completion of all the requirements na release ang among partial occupancy. Ang Daniel Labelia Pabonoan, he just mentioned about his administration be egoless, no? Meaning, it's not partial, meaning, inclusive ang nibutar niya o guwang mabutar niya, makabinibisyo niya mo. Mura nga, katong nisulti ba? Siguro tumubutar na ako. Other business-friendly systems are also running through the pipeline. Pipeline. Two are worth noting. First, a tax amnesty ordinance for all forms of taxes. And second, an amendment in our tax code facilitating the tax payments through government-owned tax. And I am very happy that Vice Mayor Mike Rama and the rest of the members of the council, even a member from the opposition is here, to hear now this request from the mayor that we have to amend. There has to be some kind of legislative intervention to achieve these reforms that the executive envisioned to ease for ease, to ease of doing business in the city. Architect, I saw him there, architect Rory Floranti Catalan. The capable Honso at the office with the building official just made headlines early this month. Obo has cut the waiting time for building permits using a digital system that releases permits after three days at the most. More crucial, this streamlined process 
has shut down the chance for corruption, which I really, really hate. Soon, our city treasury is going to speed up its processes, the outmated systems. Right before the senior citizens part, there now stands the physical structure of the Cebu City Financial Center, a one-stop shop for business transactions. With the government set to open this November, this November we will open the senior or the Cebu City Financial Center. will house the Association of Barangay Councils, headed by Councillor Franklin Moore on the third floor. This building puts under one roof also of the city, the offices of the city treasurer, Jerome Castillo, the assessor, Sandre Villarojo, city accountant, Jerome Ornopia, and the building official, Florante Catalan. Consolidating these of offices adds to our financial strength. While it is our thrust not to increase taxes, we will not increase taxes, but we must undertake the active and efficient collection of taxes to increase revenue. <laughs> the increase of revenue bears on all our social projects whose funding and sustainability depends on the steady replenishment of our city treasury in the person of CPA lawyer, Jerome Castillo. Because of our history as a trading force, commerce is our city's lifeblood. Many in the audience now can attest to how Kausaban has renewed City Hall ties with the business community and of course you can attest to that Cebu Chamber of Commerce. Cebu will be uh, progressing fast under the leadership of very dynamic uh, mayor, mayor uh, Labidia. Well, of course, uh, we need so many uh, uh, things to attend to, like uh, the shortage of water, anything that will help the poor people to improve their livelihood. Uh, the cleanliness, for example, uh, the basura that uh, around uh, should find a way to solve this basura problem. Maybe. The best solution is the machine to build the waste into energy. I can feel that he's doing his very best to solve all this uh, problem. And I wish him all the best. And that he's uh, strong leadership and uh, caring and, uh, and want to really uh, solve all this problem sincerely. I'm working very hard, uh, I'm sure. Uh, will be successful. A good example is our present relationship with the Cebu Chamber of Commerce. We have an agreement to activate the Cebu Investment Concerns. This special body guides investors to the right business connections and its thriving markets in Cebu. Can we give a round of applause to the Cebu Chamber? <laughs> Regulating the private sector is part of our mandate, balanced with our commitment to make our local economy robust. The ease of doing business after all, doubles the odds for corporate social responsibility. It affects the lives of ordinary Cebuanos. 
in terms of getting employment as well as getting job satisfaction. Regulating the short-term measures the traffic rules are my primary concern. I can feel, I can feel everyone's pain, even the problems declared in the crisis, and I can understand. Because I feel it every day when I struggle to keep up with the commitments. And I feel, I feel it when I look at worried faces in other cars and in the haggard books of ordinary commuters. The complex problem has sparked various traffic meetings from the budget consultation to the city transportation office to decisions with experts and civic groups like the Cebu Road Heroes. The outcome of these meetings is an executive order, which I've just signed, that puts a pressure on enforcement. The swift apprehension of undisciplined drivers is a proven tool for decreasing traffic violations and easing congestion. One is to order all traffic enforcers to restore mobility to our roads and strictly implement our laws. Enforcers, enforcers, CITO must do the following. Patrol the areas where drivers with no discipline are getting worse by the minute. All these areas, at these areas, issue along with citations, a formal requirement for traffic re-education, exact higher fines in order to cultivate self-regulation, be aggressive in apprehending moving violations and plain new offenses, go after stubborn jeepney drivers who load or unload passengers at no stopping signs, look out for vehicles that are not roadworthy and keep them off our streets. Three long-term solutions demand coordination and meticulous design. First are the measures calling on stakeholders and volunteer groups to act as traffic educators and watchdogs. Second is the infrastructure. This transformation, as the public knows, is already in motion with the push for the integrated intermodal traffic system combining the monorail and rapid business transits. We should give a round of applause to the efforts of Presidential Assistant Secretary Michael Dino and the President of the Republic of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. In addition, from the windows of City Hall, a new bridge can now be seen connecting our city with Baghdad. This new structure testifies to the goodness achieved by the synergy among the urban centers of Mega Cebu, our dear governor. Gwen Garcia. And of course, again, the leadership of Presidential Assistant for the Visayas, the alter ego of the President of the Visayas, Secretary Michael Dino. The third solution is the total upgrading of our traffic technology. It involves the use of artificial intelligence, or AI, and high-resolution cameras to monitor the roads. 
This technology guarantees not only the apprehension of violators, but also the calibrated regulation of vehicular flaws across our networks. I trust that Mayor Samsam Ulias and Mayor Jonas Cortez are eager to help us, to help all of us defeat this traffic monster by linking our cities with seamlessly integrated AI systems. During a consultation meeting, it shocked me to learn that the traffic light system in our city is the same one we have had in 1990. Imagine 1990. And today is already 2019. After close to three decades, it simply boggles the mind how our city's traffic technology has not kept up with the times. We have to do something about this. Until infrastructure soon gains momentum, I call on everyone to obey traffic laws. Meanwhile, we are providing at least four calcium buses to service regular commuters in strategic roads all over the metro, which are seen during the evenings, during the hours. We will deploy for at least four calcium buses. Gamay na lang ang ating pag-antos, ha? Governor Gwen, gamay na lang ang antos. Pinawagunta. Nagkasabot naman taan eh. Is that si Jonas? Is that si Juan? Is that si Samsung? Because if there is heavy traffic in Mandawi, abot mga Yusibu City. If there is heavy traffic in Talisa, abot mga Yato Yusibu City. Anyway, ego less will be tulong. Huwag ni full of ego. Huwag mali na kadapat ko na ito. Ganang full of ego na ito kapag Governor, nakalimot mo ta na one day your life will flash before your eyes. See to it that it is worth watching. Habit na mausap ang atong mga sistema sa traffic opening kamutan ng ato sa tabang ni Presidential Assistant Secretary Mike Lino. So I beg our computers, please be patient. We must all cooperate as we build the systems that our people truly deserve. As we speak, our special body for the South Road Properties, South Road Properties Center, SRP, is finalizing the strategic blueprint, the fiscal and infrastructural blueprint integrates various investor plans, assembling a smart, transport accessible, and ecologically sound urban board. As a result, the SRP is now at an advantage to draw good investment, create more, and optimize the city's earnings. These past 100 days of heightened the attractiveness, attractiveness of SRP to economic and in the way of negotiations with locators, our administration has made evident its desire to make or to strike a balance between supporting the business sector and implementing our regulatory laws. The newly opened Cebu Ocean Park is just a start.
is a welcome addition to the joint venture of the SM Ayala Consortium. City Hall already granted the consortium its land development permit renewing our partnership with these developers. Ma Marisa Fernand, are you there? Yes, she is representing the SN properties. Let's give a round of applause to Ma Marisa Fernand. In two decades at full development, starting in 2020, the joint venture projects, the creation of almost 2 million direct and indirect jobs, employment opportunities for at least 2 million direct and indirect jobs when this consortium shall have become fully operational. So I am relying on you, Cebuanos, seeking greener pastures not to leave our city. I hope you are to see that. And in turn, you can rely on Dean Kausaban on his commitment to job creation, to a surge of investments carefully weighed alongside common interests and to coherent urban planning at the South Road properties. Ayaw ko pang ayas na ito sa sa tuburan o sa sikihon. Palihong magbuyog lang dati rin mga kaigsunan. Tukura din ni ang inyong kakuhin para magpalamun sa ato pinalanggang kapabayan sa sunyo. It is no news that Cebu City Medical Center conceived as an institution for the least of us almost fell into ruin but this year, the drive to complete it is being revitalized. Evon Kanya is there. The people should expect the three floors to be operational by the first quarter of 2020. Our administration with Vice Mayor Mike Rama and the rest of the members of the City Council has identified three key areas that should be up and running early next year. Its laboratory, its radiology, and imaging division, and its pharmacy. City Hall is slated to purchase cutting-edge technology for its laboratory, as well as its radiology and imaging, imaging divisions. It also commits to providing its pharmacy the widest possible assortment of drugs and medical supplies at rates affordable to ordinary citizens. The city currently has 190,000 public elementary pupils. It's one of my campaign promises. Imagine this entire group of kids turning into a smart, healthy men and women in the future. A whole population ready for economic inputs is a game changer. And we stand to gain new game changers within a decade if our kids get nutritious food every day. If they develop powerful brains and strong bodies, None of them, especially those from poor families, should go hungry because our city depends on, the trans on their transformation into the kind of men and women we need to make up the future brighter. For that reason, with the Nutrition Summit soon taking place this October, we are getting closer to, final to finalize the Kausaban Nutrition master plan. Our government, that's not 
na, mangbot. Sinsya lang ha. Labi to tayo panihapon, hindi ko man ha. Taas ko tinuhon, pero I tried to shortlist, but dagan ako tag-report. So, pasinsya lang tayo mo. Our government must now work side by side with the civil society to harmonize isolated feeding activities and to define the organizational structure, logistics, and sustainability of an entire citywide program fighting malnutrition. Two sets of nutrition centers are going to be established, respectively, in schools and in barangays. The kitchens of those centers are going to draw on the food supply provided by our farmers in our cities in their land, mountain barangays. The master plan hence brings farmers into the program. Farmers must now up their game and learn sustainable natural methods to produce healthy options for our nutrition centers. The current design of our new school buildings, thanks to the effort of Rani Jola of our local school board, now includes the school-based centers kitchens under the stewardship of the Department of Education and the board with Rani Jola and the Hamad. Under the direction of Barangay Captains, our community-based nutrition centers are going to address the nutritional needs of pregnant mothers as well as children on school break. The children who during the time risk pulling back into malnourished state. No person alone can fight malnutrition at the scale of a city as large as ours. This project needs concerted effort among our various individuals and organizations. Hence, the rallying call for shared accountability and collective action is Ubanta sa Kausaban. Matsi, the nutrition program for our children, we need a public institution, the underprivileged college students. This matter of founding the Cebu City College aligns with our desire to build demographic strength while attracting investment. But there are skeptics who fail to see the poor but hardworking students who have very limited access to world-class training, especially in the fields that our city can no longer afford to ignore. The chart this Cebu City College proposed is aimed at solving the issues fixing Cebu City for almost decades now. Consolacion has its own Cebu City. Consolacion College is just a town. Talisay, of course, way, way, way. Four, I went that way. Lapulang. Garbage, flooding, dysfunctional water systems and traffic congestion. We need to produce local technocrats grown from our smart but marginalized sectors to address these problems in the long term. We also need social workers, experts of affordable housing, and trainers who must upgrade the fields already identified with our workforce. We absolutely must found a city college to meet these needs. Fortunately, we have already persuaded the Commission on Higher Education, after talks with its regional director, to green light the college and the college ordinance is awaiting approval, although it is currently being met with unwarranted opposition. Thank you, Councillor Raymond Garcia, for advocating in the San Juan But the states, I hope, are clear to the more far-sighted among our people. Please, let's set aside partisan postures. Without building our city's human resources, economic inputs, 
tend to enrich only a few and fail to generate widespread development. That is the basis for the proposed Cebu City College. The college tailors its courses to suit our development goals, informed by expertise found in other countries, and we have already written certain consular officials. It seeks to provide high-level fields, such as solid waste management, flood control, traffic systems, environmental management, water systems, nutrition, science, hospital administration, and nursing. Also, the college also, also offers two-year courses, caregiving, welding, hotel and service industry, robotics, and sustainable farming. Athletics is a cornerstone of holistic formation. It is thus fitting for city government to receive a grant from Commissioner Ramon Fernandez to build a new sports complex. The Philippine Sports Commission has already allocated 50 million to our city for this project. Thank you, Councillor Rondon of Quebec, for working hard. El Presidente Don Ramon has called on our administration to pay these funds with our contribution so that we can build a high-rise training facility for athletes. Thank you, Vice Mayor Mike Rama and the members of the City Council. There are also communities vulnerable to natural or security disasters. Fortunately, we continue to have volunteer organizations and government bodies formed to ensure order and safety during threatening scenarios. Their courage and technical preparedness are without question. But we also have to ask ourselves, how equipped is our city to rush to their aid? What happens? When usual communication relays, we need to mobilize them all, collapse when calamities or emergencies strike. This troubling question has prompted our administration to, sit, to set up an alert system capable of sending simultaneous notifications to first responders. Councillor Dave Tumula is very much involved in this. The unified alert system innovates on the use of good old radio frequencies for simultaneous communication. It embeds radio in new kinds of technology capable of interfacing with our new devices and of scaling of our communications from the wrong kinds of people. Furthermore, there is one set of responders whose services we often take for granted. I am referring here to the police Without proper spaces, the police are unable to work efficiently. Colonel Jema Winlohan, our new police chief, and a welcome addition to the team, Kausaban, has met with our administration to advance the renovation of Stations 5 and 7, respectively, and Station 9, in the carbon and part places. Furthermore, the goal is to transform these stations into professional efficient spaces to help the police in these areas project its visibility and to help the public trust and respect our law enforcers anew. Have you gone to carbon market nowadays? Past visits might have discouraged many of you because of its black transport channels. The chains around there now especially along Kessel Boulevard and Basil Boulevard, is the outcome of the works that Junel, Matugina, and Raquel Boho Arsi have done to clean those streets. Thank you for giving these effective administrators a big hand for a round of applause. Carbon market. You know why it's called carbon market? It's an important load, both at the level of micro-enterprise and that of local culture. 
It has a rich history. The site was once the source of gold, fueling the local economy during the early stage of our city's industrialization. On a carbon market, it was a carbon market because of the coal at that time. The city administrator, Floro Casas, and the rest of our team are working to finalize the most coherent, fiscally responsible blueprint for revitalizing this historic book. The highlight of this project is a heritage walk together with Vice Mayor Mike Rama and the rest of the heritage people, radiating out of a cleaner, more orderly carbon market. The Colon area is another important site in the project. You know what's the best part of it? The best part is that Kenneth Gokonkwe, who is over there, has agreed to design our new vendor stall. <laughs> Frankly, I am still trying to wrap my mind around the fact that a world-renowned designer with clients from Hollywood and all over Europe is helping us reshape the look and function of our vendors' stalls. Thank you, Mr. Kenneth. <laughs> but both the folks seeking in livelihood and the vendors, visitors downtown, can gain immense benefit from the revitalization of carbon and pollution. Making these spaces coherent and accessible harmonizes their mixed uses and holds the potential of reversing urban blight in our historic downtown. Kenneth, again, thank you very much for your job. Thank you for sharing your gift. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Both the folks seeking a livelihood would be very, very grateful for your help, Kenneth. Philosophers in the last century have warned that ours is an age of crisis in dwelling, meaning housing. They were right. Cebu's urban boom, in fact, has generated a human surplus in the form of slums. That has a form of human slums. We call them informal centers. They come as workers continue to flock to our city, struggling to catch even just a small bit of its economic growth and yet constantly facing displacement. Our administration seeks to banish this nightmarish side to our dreams of development. Team Kausaban responds to the crisis in Welly with the project Gaza Sapaglao or Gift of Hope. This large-scale program for socialized housing has broken ground presently at Lorega. There, two new five-story buildings for our relocated informal centers are being constructed as we speak now this afternoon. <laughs> Para sa mga kapos na itong kahit suuna. Uh, I think we need to pass an ordinance na una na ito tagahan o development permit kanyang mga dagko ng mga developers din sa siyudad sa Subo. They have to deposit the amount for social housing. Una na itong tagahan o development permit para mapugos yun sila para naapay ang kapatokot o nagkalain-lain ng mga
similar housing provisions in Mimbambaling and Armenta are soon to rise, but close to schools installed with a livelihood component and situated close to public transport. <laughs> to make Gaza Sabaglao sustainable, it is our com commitment to implement the law, the ODHA law, ordering property developers. There are some property developers here. I'm just reminding you to allocate funds for socialized housing. The law mandates that for every condominium that companies build, 5% must go towards housing the destitute and the less privileged members of society. With subdivisions, with subdivisions, 50% is mandated. As your mayor, I order that this socialized housing component, and I have talked this over with the regional director of the HLURB, that the 5 and 15 percent respectively component for socialized housing must be applied not to any other random local government, but solely, but solely within Cebu City for our less privileged members of society. Gaza Sapaglao is the most crucial part of our Kausaban agenda. There would be little point in showcasing a modern Cebu if majority of our people live in dehumanizing conditions. Mga higala, ubanta sa kausapan, apan ang mga kabus, dili nato iyaan. The call for change must be heard another way. We simply must stop being comfortable with the misery of others. The scope of our, of our city's ambition should include the aspirations of ordinary citizens striving to lift themselves out of poverty and to build good, dignified lives. We admit that our country, including our city, is in the midst of a very serious, very serious political and social imbalance. Too many have too little, while too few have too much of the good things in life. J. Jovalius knows about this predicament that we have. So, mga kaitsunan, sa milabay ng usang kagatus na adlaw, hinaot na klaro ang atong pag-ihaw. Hinaot na klaro ang accountability. Ang kaakuhan na dili na para ka na itong abtit o buhi, kundi para sa kaupaan sa atong pinalanggap dagbayan sa sumo. Puhon, puhon, muli doon pagkamot ang atong mga bagong tinanong. Puhon, mula doon kini o mabunga. Aron puhon, muwabot ang atlaw. Bisang dilig na kita mahinong duman ang mga sukuanon na wala pa matao makapalando sa mga punuan na lalingsing na karon. May God bless the world we have begun. Together uphold our common striving and help us build lasting legacies. A legacy is like a seed that will never soon grow, but only the generations to come would bring the fruits. More power to all Sukuanos, to all fellow public servants, and to our shared vision of 
yung kausapan. More power to our beloved Cebu City. Takang salamat. Thank you.